everybody welcome back to a video so glad that you're here to join me today i've got some exciting fabric and sewing pattern pairings for you this video follows my previous one about well my next big kind of sewing adventure my personal sewing challenge which is to hopefully create a handmade mini capsule wardrobe now i talk a lot about how this all came together and a couple of pattern options which i had asked for your opinions to vote on and more or less i think i have a feeling of which ones um i'm going to make because i think unless like a a load of people swing the vote drastically another way um, quite a number of these have clear winners like they're way ahead in their votes and stuff like that so I've tallied them up for you I spent um, a whole day the other day digging through my own fabric stash to look for appropriate uh, fabric types and ideally colors that work together i often buy fabrics like one off like i'll touch something i'm very much of that like tactile shopping person i'll touch something like oh i like the way this feels and i'll get it as, and you know if it's a nice color it works out it's great um so while there is over time a slight color theme in my fabric collection Sometimes when you have a pattern in mind and you're trying to pull from your stash, it's hard to make a cohesive color palette because, well, the colors that do go together aren't necessarily the right types of fabric for that particular pattern. So we'll talk about all of that in a second. I do want to address, I don't know when this particular video is going up, hopefully not too long after I'm filming it, but um, only a couple of days ago, Tomcat Stitchery, Whitney, who runs the channel, um, she was the one that kind of has inspired me to try making a, a mini capsule, a handmade mini capsule. Um, she has done loads of them and I'll put her info down below and stuff like that. But recently she just announced that she's going to do um, a new handmade capsule. She's calling it modules. It's really like a mini capsule wardrobe. And she's gonna do one for, I think, work work from home, work at home, something like that. Like much more relaxed kind of clothes. Um, so all the hashtags, all the info for that will be down below. I'm so excited that she's doing that so I can kind of follow along. I sew super slow. So for me, this whole mini capsule, I'm going to really take my time doing it and it won't be like, you know, to her timeline or anything like that. But I'm just kind of excited that there's something new to follow along. Um, there will be the appropriate hashtags if you want to follow along, say on Instagram and see what other people are also doing. Anyways, that's my social media blurb about what's going on. But let's go on and have a look at kind of the patterns that you voted on and also the uh, colors and particular fabrics I've got here to show you. Um, Sidetrack. I'm wearing pink today and I was gonna go sit on the pink mauve couch and then decided that's a lot of pink in one video so I'm filming my bedroom right now if you see like all this stuff and whatnot um, just for a change so you're not like pink on pink on pink mm, we'll see I'll try to remember to wear some other colors when I go and film in the living room all right let's um, I think it makes sense to start by looking at the color palette so I'm gonna pop up here YouTube magic um my six colors and i wasn't intending it to be six colors but the fabrics that I had chosen ended up being these six colors so what do we have we have a smoky black and i call it a smoky black because the fabric the nature of the fabric is not um, doesn't dye like a rich true black and over time as you wash it it will definitely begin to fade more into a charcoal just the nature of what it is so we've got a smoky black and I will say, it's been a long time since I made something in black. There was a phase in my life where I wore a lot of black and now I'm kind of over it. So this will be new for me. Then we have a deep navy. I adore navy. Navy is my new black. I hardly ever wear black. Sometimes I wear it to work for my bottoms because it's easy to wash and disguises any grubbiness. But navy is my favorite. And then we have a light gray. Now these three core colors, if you want to call them more core neutrals, are actually the colors of my bottoms. 
Um, a lot of these fabrics could have been interchanged to make either the tops that were chosen or the bottoms but after kind of playing around with it and looking at how the colors would pair together I decided uh, to put these three colors for my bottoms versus the top so there's that all right let's move on to the next three colors i have a mossy green which is an item that's ready made that's my tabitha tee from tilly and the buttons it's one piece i'm going to count made because i made it kind of recently and i do wear a lot i think it will fit nicely into this capsule so that color is kind of predetermined then i've got two kind of lavender lilac-y purpley shades and i actually had to look up on google which side is called lavender and which side is called lilac because I know one side leans a bit more pink and one side leans a bit more blue so I think I figured it out so we do have I'm calling it like a creamy lavender and then the other color I'm calling it a shimmery lilac because that's the only fabric with a bit of shine on it so um, hopefully you would have also seen on the side here as I was talking how the colors rotate and the tops and bottoms can still go together and match each other so let's find out which color and fabric is going to go with which pattern now I will be looking down frequently because I, I have it all listed on my iPad and I'm not going to remember let's start off with hmm what should we start off with let's start with the outer because I think that makes more sense um, I really hummed and hawed about what color to do the outer and like I said I really refrained from buying more beautiful fabric to you know make this capsule because I could have could have gone like oh I needed a print so let's go get some more fabric but I think with the mindset of trying to save more money that's a whole nother story for this year but um, and just using my own stash um, I decided to keep everything within what I have in my stash. So the first one that I'm going to use is this knit fabric. You will find, and actually I just realized this yesterday when I was putting the pieces for this video together, all, almost all of these fabrics for this mini capsule are knits. That's very unusual for me. I hardly ever sew with knits. I'm not super comfortable sewing with knits, but all these are fairly stable knits, like they're thicker winter weight knits. So I think it will be more forgiving, even for like a knit novice like myself. So I've got this black, um, I would say this is like medium to thick cotton knit with a good amount of stretch. Um, as I'm talking through this fabrics, uh, there will be like a little insert here that will show you more details so I don't have to keep holding this up. But this is just like a black stretch knit fabric. I don't know what else to say. Um, it's very basic and I think when you think about basics, they are the ones that get worn most often. This is going to be used to make my outer piece, which you have by a landslide voted for the Tilly and the Buttons Bertha cardigan so that will be done in this black. I usually like a bright cardigan or something more fun because that's like my topper piece but after playing around the combinations it just made more sense to do the topper in this dark color because that kind of grounds everything and um, when I mix the super light colors on for the tops with the black it just seems like too much contrast for me and um, so yeah, this is going to become a Bertha cardigan. Now I'm going to try really hard to find some ways to still add color or detail to the Bertha cardigan because it doesn't excite me to have just like an all black cardigan. You know, it's, it's not very thrilling for me, but I know it will get tons of wear and it might even become like a work wear piece as well. So this is quite heavyweight, it's four way stretch, um, would be great for a cardigan, really cozy type of fabric. I'm not sure how well this would wash over time. I do have a feeling it will begin to fade. If you have ideas on how to make any of these basic looking items a little bit more snazzy, hey, let me know in the comments down below. All right, uh, top number one is decided already. That is the Tabitha t-shirt. I won't go over that again. That is the one in the mossy green. Let's go to topper number two. So topper number two, we're like at a 
yeah, we're like a, a 70 30 kind of a split. Um, but I think the toaster sweater is the one that's going to win out. And because of the bottoms that you all voted on, I decided not to make the silhouette of the toaster sweater that I initially wanted, which is more of the tunic length. Because with the pants, you won't get to see the details of the pants or the skirt if I made that tunic length um, toaster sweater. So I decided instead to make a more cropped, more of a sweatshirty version of the toaster so we can really show off the pants. It was kind of a last minute decision. I might eventually still make that toaster tunic, but for this capsule, um, I think that's, that's what we're gonna do. So, toaster sweater is going to be made in this. Now, let me get this right. This is the lavender fabric. The three knits I have are almost the same weight. This is a little thinner than the cardigan, but I think it's the same type of fabric. Um, it's just a stretch knit. It's again, four-way stretch, but because of the thickness, I think it is fairly stable. This will hopefully be enough for the um, toaster sweater, the cropped version. And because I'm short, I think with the pattern alterations, I can get away with fitting it onto this piece of fabric. I bought this piece of fabric and the other one, not the black, but one that you'll see, for another project. But this whole capsule wardrobe thing came up and I figured, who knows when I'm gonna sew that. Let's just use this for what I have plans for right now. So I think this is enough. I'm pretty sure this is just a meter, but like I said, I'm short and I'm small. So maybe I'll be able to squeeze the uh, crop toaster out of this. Now, like I said, I think this color looks a lot better against my face than something like the solid black or, or whatnot. So this is quite a, an easy to wear color. I've been starting to wear quite a bit of uh, purples. So crop toaster sweater. All right, let's go on to the third top that you voted on. And they are very similar. Um, the two options were the Often Cami or the Misty Camisole. You guys voted for the Misty Camisole. So I decided for something a little bit different. And the Misty Camisole can go a bit more dressy. Um, I pulled out this. I think this is Duchess Satin? Duchess Satin? I'm fairly certain this is Duchess satin. Um, so it's the type that is shiny on one end. Oh, just look at it, it's so pretty. Um, shiny on one end and more of a matte on the other end. Um, this could also be crepe back satin, I'm not sure. It's a good thickness. It's definitely not like a flimsy kind of weight. This is like the nice stuff that you get at the nice stores. <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. Um, should be still fairly good to work with. Fairly stable, even though it is a drapey, very fluid fabric. But the shine, y'all. The shine is going to be beautiful as a camisole, I think. Those of you, I think, wanted to see me make the one with the crisscross, uh, thinner strap detail. I don't think that's going to happen because I like to try the thicker straps so you can wear a regular bra with it. Because I, I don't think I'll have a bra that's this color with the straps that are this color. So I would rather not have it mismatch, be mismatch. We'll see. I haven't made that uh, a firm decision yet. But this will be the Misty Camisole. And again, I think against the face, it's, it's quite nice. Like, it's pleasant. So this is another top. And if you want to see a contrast between the lilac and the lavender, this is the lavender and this is the lilac. There we go. Okay, let's go to bottoms. Bottom number one, pretty much by a landslide, you all voted for the No Pattern Needed from that book. I'm calling it the wrap tulip skirt. It's a very interesting shape and all of that. So initially I had thought I was going to use this black fabric to make the skirt. But then I thought with all the lighter color tops being so light and just having like a black skirt, it, it was a lot of contrast. So I relegated that to the cardigan and instead, and I hope I have enough fabric for this, 
I'm going to use the same weight and type of fabric as the toaster sweater that I will make but instead it is this gray color and again I bought these two pieces of fabric for a different project but I don't think that's going to happen for a while so why not use it for this I'm calling this a medium gray um, medium to light gray and it's a nice neutral it won't work as well if you want to wear like black tights and stuff but maybe on the days I'm not wearing tights or if I'm wearing this around at home um, I only have about a meter of this and I'm hoping I'm hoping that's enough it is one of those patterns that you draft yourself based on certain measurements so I don't actually have the pattern pieces done yet I don't know if this is enough I'm hoping it will be enough so this is kind of a still up in the air choice once I um, make and draft the sewing pattern for the wrap tulip skirt an idea I had if it works out, if I have enough fabric, the main body of the wrap skirt will be in this color. And then where the edge, the trim is in the contrasting color, I'm going to use some of this black knit fabric and um, do the band in the black. So that kind of pulls the colors together. I think that would be interesting. Or I think I have like a teal maybe, a teal fabric or a dusty blue um, ribbing cut just kind of a, a strip that I could do to do uh, the border so let me know what you think black dusty blue teal I'll have to see I would like to do the border in a different color and again this is a four-way stretch but fairly stable all right last thing I've got here the second bottom piece you've chosen um, and again by a landslide is the job from the Japanese uh, sewing book couturier sewing I think it's called I'm calling it the wide leg crop pant it's got a big ribbon sash thing in the front which is removable but that's the part kind of I really like so I'm going to keep that um, I have the perfect fabric for that and this fabric could have been used for either the joggers or the wide leg pant um, so it was okay whichever one that you voted on I initially bought this to make some sportswear never actually got to making the sportswear but I figured the crop pants got the most vote and those of you were interested probably just how that would look once it's made up um, I decided to make it in a sportswear fabric for a twist initially I was going to make it in a chino or a I don't know like a heavier twill or a gabardine 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 something like that bottom weight fabric but then i saw this and i thought it could still work maybe i think so um and be a little bit weather appropriate for the wet season this is kind of a, a water resistant nylon thick nylon nylon polyester something i'm sure there's nylon in here i can't remember what it was when i bought it but it's got a little bit of stretch width wise and like I don't know like a 10% lengthwise so this is a not quite a four-way stretch kind of a two-ish two and a half <laughs> way stretch but it's a beautiful navy color this is my um, neutral of choice really but I have loads of this because I bought it initially for some kind of a, a sportswear jacket or like a bomber jacket something like that um, clearly that hasn't happened so we're going to use it for the pants there's plenty of this fabric so enough for the pants and I find it interesting that this fabric actually has a twill weave if you look closely it has those diagonal lines um, so yeah and I'm fairly certain this is water resistant it's got a little bit of that body and crispness which I think the crop pants need to look real cool what I would like to do and I don't know if this will be successful is I want to try making a lining for these pants so they can be a little bit warmer because with it being wide leg all the air is going to come up from the bottom and you're going to be a little bit chilly I think so those are the fabrics that I chose based on the patterns that you chose <laughs> all right I hope that was kind of insightful and interesting for you there won't be I don't think there will be an update for this bigger project uh, for a little while as I finish making each individual garment 
Um, I will show you in my, you know, sew and tell kind of those updates mixed in with other sewing things I've done. But in terms of revealing cohesively the whole capsule, it's going to be a little bit of time. Um, actually, let me know if you prefer for me to keep these pieces a uh, secret until they're all done or you wouldn't mind seeing them as part of my other videos um, for things I've, I've made. So as they come out, as I finish them, I can show you them. Um, or do you prefer to keep it all together as a secret? I think if you chose the latter to keep it all together, it's gonna be a long time before you see any of these things because um, I'm giving myself quite um, a big window of time to work on these and not putting myself like on a da -da -da, you know strict schedule. But I'm fairly, excited about how these will come out and like i said i didn't realize this was going to be such a knit heavy mini capsule um i'm not the best and most confident at working with knits but it is a learning experience and none of the patterns i've chosen are terribly fussy they may have a couple more pieces but they're pretty straightforward so if you are excited to see all this come together give this video a thumbs up leave me your thoughts and comments down below and as always if you want to keep up with what i'm up to or how the progress is i'll probably be doing progress updates over on my social media so make sure you're following me on there if you are on those same platforms as well and um if you're here for the first time because you're here from whitney's video or you know the whole module sewing community i love if you stayed if you subscribe hit notifications so you'll be updated when a new video comes out can't wait to see what you've been up to if you're also sewing leave me your links down below in the comments and i'll chat with you over there take care everybody bye for now